So today we're going to start with Python functions. So what actually functions are, you just understand in this manner, that functions are small blocks or small codes, or you can say uh, there is an open ground. Okay, there's an open ground. You want to construct a building out of it. So what happens if you, if a person want to live in an open ground, then it, it is not a, uh, Constructed properly means uh, you, there is no privacy. There is no nothing. There is nothing. Uh, 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 means all is open and you are not a private properly private. Your uh, area is not uh, particularly private. The fall is uh, uh, what I can say. I'm not getting a particular word of it, but you, I hope you understood it. You are not getting a particular thing. So uh, to get that particular privacy, what uh, uh, we need to do? We need to construct little rooms into that particular ground. Or little rooms means uh, if you construct three rooms, then it will give privacy to three people or more uh, three families. You can say so. This is how a building to construct a building, then more privacy will be conducted and more number of things, uh, number of people will play there. So what is actually happening over here? Our editor, that VS Code, whatever wherever we write our codes, that editor is is entirely a ground, an open ground, and you can do anything into it. But when we cut that open ground into functions, into small blocks, then what happens? Those codes are there. They get privated uh, into that particular block only. So once they get privacy into it, when we require it, we will just pull it up and use it. Are you getting my point? So functions are nothing but breaking the entire uh, program into small blocks. And using that blocks as per our convenience, and not only once, as many times as we want. Okay, so it will help. What in what purpose it will help you? It will help in understanding the code, making the code more simple. Now, uh, removing the complexity of the code completely means uh, if you are programming, if third person see the program, he could understand it or she could understand it easily. That is what the complexity of the code is being removed. And third thing, uh, avoiding rewriting of the codes. For example, if at a position 80, you require an addition, okay, sum of two numbers. At position 20, uh, 120, you again require sum of two numbers. So if you create a function, so at position 80, you can call that function. At position 120, you can also call that function. So you are avoiding the rewriting of codes. Did you understood this? Just put on the comment section and let me know that if you understood what is Python function. Understood. Very good. So uh, as I told, function helps break our program to smaller and modular chunks, okay, in small pieces. Now, this is how we define functions in Python, using def. Now, def is a declaration. Uh, in C, C++, Java, we use the uh, type of function type, like uh, we use uh, void, we use int, float, then sometimes char, whatever you use to data, as per the data coming, we uh, changed our things like if the uh, values are if you want to return something then it we write in float or anything else if you want to return a float value then write float if you want to return an int value then write int if you want to return a character value then write char to the function definition type so these were all uh, criteria that were that we were bound in okay but over here in python it has become much easier than other other uh, languages over here, what happens? We need to only declare a function with a name, and we can do anything what we want. We can return it. We don't want to return. Don't return it. We can accept the data as any data what we want: list, tuple, dictionary, numbers, string, whatever we want. We can accept it. There is no binding bounding of data. I hope you understood it. Now uh, you can utilize it. You can say do anything in the functions. So there is no limitations in this uh, function block. Only you need to uh, understand is the indentation. Whatever there is uh, indented, it will be uh, taken inside the function. If the indentation goes wrong, means an extra indentation, 
or a lust indentation, then it will throw you an error. So indentation is the first thing that needs to be uh, taken care of. Now, this is how a function procedure works. I have defined a function with a name, some name, any name. Over here, I've written function name. You can understand by any name. So this is the way of declaration. So over here, what I have done, I have defined a function with a name. And in the parenthesis, I've done nothing. That means I am not passing any value to the function. I will tell you what is the passing a value and accepting a value, returning a value. I will tell you all this. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how to use that function? So we are just passing the value. Uh, we are just calling this function right over here. Wherever we require, we will just need to call the name of the function with parentheses. So what happens? All the codes, all the codes written inside this function will get executed at this point. At this point, all the codes written inside a function will get executed. Okay. Now, if I want to write it again, I will just declare the function name and call it. Then again, those codes will get executed right away here. So this is how a function gets executed. Okay. Now, now there are different methods. So I will not uh, go with this uh, particular thing. I will just explain you first. So let me switch the screen to code. And now I will just uh, new, create a new file and write down page3.py. Uh, yeah, we got code. Okay. So now we'll start out with functions. Now, the first step that we require is to declare a function. So for declaring a function, we'll write def, def, then a function name. For example, if I want to add two numbers, okay, I want to add two numbers. So let the function name be sum or addition or add anything. And then the parentheses, and then a colon. Colon is the starting of any uh, special type of things like if, else, when the control structures, functions, class and objects, all are starting with a colon. Okay. It's, uh, you can say wherever you require an indentation. And so you need to denote that everything must be in, in, indented inside this blocks. So you will require a colon over there. Okay, most most of the times. Now, def add. Now, this function uh, work is to add the data. So, I will just take a variable s and add two data, two plus three. Okay, two plus three, and I will just print it. Print s. So, what I'm doing, I'm just I have just made an add function. Over here, I have taken two values, two. Three, and when I'm taking these two values, I'll just uh, I'm just adding these values and storing it in S. Okay. Now I will be just printing S over here. So what happens now? The code should execute and give me that value two plus three that is five. Are you getting my point? So I will just run the code. So the code is Python dot slash webinar three point Session two, day three dot five. You can see the code executed, but there is no output. This is because we haven't we haven't uh, executed executed the function. We haven't called the name of the function. So this is there is no main function over here from where the code will start running in other languages as of compared to Python. But there, the entire sheet acts as a main function, and the blocks are the sub functions. So, if you want to call the sub function inside the main function, you need to call the function name right over here in the main block. So, add, and when I call add, then when I execute this code, uh, let it get saved. So, when I execute this code, it is giving me five. You can see it's giving me five right over here, and two plus three is five. Okay. Now, uh, now I will tell you 
for example, because fun we have come to functions. So before entering deep into function, I would love to tell you how to take input of data from the user. User input of the data. So over here, two and three, we have given directly input. Okay. So now we will first learn user input. Okay. So for taking the input from the user, first of all, we need to write a variable. Let it be x. Now the function that we're going to use is input. Input function, and inside the parentheses, we're going to pass what should be the uh, text written. Means, for example, enter your name. So that part we're going to write over here. Like we're going to write enter to number. Now, if I'm writing enter two numbers, so uh, I will tell you what is happening over here. So just I will let me execute this code. Okay, it's asking me for enter two numbers, and when I write twelve and press an enter, it is accepting only one number, the first point. So one input will take only one uh, value, one time value. Okay, now. This is the first check. I will tell you how to take uh, multiple data into one input only. That also we'll just discuss. But this is this is one by one step that we will go on. So first thing that when we input, it will take only one. If you require two inputs, then what you need to have, you can enter first number, and similarly you can have a value right over here. Enter second number. Okay, the two numbers you have done. Enter first number. Enter second number. Now, if you execute this, so it's asking twelve, and then again asking any number, you will get both the numbers. Now, the second step that you need to understand is what is the type of the data that input is giving to us. Now, we'll just print x and print the type of x. The same is the type of y, so we need not to print uh, both the values. We'll just uh, go with x and write the type of x. So I'll just write twelve. Uh, I will execute it again. So you can see the x value is twelve. That is correct, but the type is str, and we cannot add strings. Are you getting me? 12 plus 15, when both the are string type, will concatenate each other and give you the value 1, 2, 1, 5. Uh, I will just uh, tell you properly what it will do. When we add 12 plus 15, then it must give you 27 but what happens when this is string type str and this is also str then it will not give this value rather it will add it each other concatenate each other and give you one two one five it will provide you this value. Are you getting my point? So uh, to remove this, we need to convert this str into int. We need to convert this str into int. If we can do this, then only we can add with the data. So for doing it, what we require, we need to we need to Convert this. So for converting this, either you can store the values and then typecast it as we discussed previously, or else you can directly typecast these values. Like I will directly typecast this in right over here. And same thing I will do with this in right over here. So what happens now if I execute the code and get the values like 12, 15, and now the 12 is typed. End. So this is how to convert it as per our requirement. 
whenever you will write in code, it will directly break to string type. And then you need to convert. Now, if you want to store multiple data into one input, then you need to use uh, different types of uh, spacing characters. Like you can use spaces, like uh, z equals to input, enter three numbers. using comma now i'm instructed to enter three numbers using comma and i will just print the value so that i get the value exactly print z and i will just uh, comment these lines and i will just execute the code so what happens it's asking me three numbers so i will just write 12 comma 15 comma 16 now I will get these values into comma, but this is a string type. Now, how to do it? We have uh, learned split function, okay? We have learned split function, and I told you that we will learn this split function later on. So what, we will just, this is a string that is coming from this, and with this string, we will just split the string that is coming, split. Now, what does this split function does? It will split, as per the uh, value that we pass on in the function like for example over here we have used comma so in single quotes we're going to pass on comma so it will split as per comma and it will it will get those values into a list and it will convert this z to a list type and it will store one by one value into the list are you getting my point so it will do this so let me just execute this once again so uh, it's giving me asking for three numbers. So I will just take three numbers using comma separated. And now 12, 14, 16. Okay. I believe uh, it's everything fine. Maybe. Yeah. So see, 12, 16, 14 were the data we have separated with commas, but now the data has been converted to your list type. And you can use each and every element separately. You can use each and every element separately. You can convert it with n with two particular steps. Either you can, uh, it's, uh, what you can do, you can just uh, it's, uh, uh, use a for loop to convert this or lambda function. Now, what is lambda function? It will research it. Just note it down. L A M B D A, lambda. Lambda function. What is lambda uh, operator? Uh, you need to just research it and just uh, get me. Let me know that what you have done out of it. Now, uh, this is what uh, we were discussing. So either you can convert it using function uh, for loop or a lambda, or else you can do this using map. You can use it using map. Now, your uh, task for today is to research on three parts. First, you need to try converting this uh, list into integer type using for loop. First task. Second task, just note it down. Second task, you need to research what is lambda function and convert this uh, list into integer using lambda function. And the third and, and important task is to make use of map to convert this uh, this list into integer type. Now, why I'm telling this three in a step? Use this sequence. First, you convert with for loop, then you go with lambda, and then you go with uh, map. Because map is something which does this entire uh, three lines, four lines code into a single line. In fact, you will just uh, using the same line, not another different line. You're going to use the same line. So this is what map does. So you need to just go through all these three things and just uh, practice it once and let me know if you find any difficulty on this. So I hope the input is input part is clear over here. So I will just uh, eliminate this. So now uh, we add an add function over here. We just uh, comment this. And now we're going to uh, discuss on the types of functions. So types of 
functions. So over here also we have the same types of functions that we had in other languages, like the first type. First type is no return, no argument, no return. Okay, no argument, no return. The second type is uh, with argument no return okay the third type is uh, no argument with return and the fourth type is with argument with return Okay, so these are the four particular uh, types of functions that we're gonna uh, understand. So the first type, no argument, no return, is what we have already done right away. So I will just copy this part and just write it down. The first one, no argument, no return. And just put it on and I will just comment it. Okay. So what I have done over here, so now we'll just use the input. We'll be using the input like x comma y equals to input. Enter two numbers. And we'll just add x plus y. So we'll just execute this code. Enter to numbers 12. Okay, uh, we made a mistake. 12 comma 13. Uh, I hope it was not valid over here. So I'll just put this on. So now we'll enter two numbers, 12, 13, and uh, it is giving us one to one. This is because we haven't converted it to integer type. Now we're gonna pass on and convert it to int. And then again, we need to convert it to int. And now we'll just execute this code. It's giving us 25. You can see, this add what happens over here why it is no argument no return we are not returning anything to this function means uh, the calling function we are not returning anything and we are also not sending any values from the calling function to the function are you getting my point so this is no argument no return now if you want to go for second part that is with uh with argument no return so over here what we're going to do we're going to use the add function once again but over here we need to send some argument okay send some value so this type of values what happens it gives you uh what you can say you can send the values to the function so i will over here write a function definition add and over here, I will just comment this and I'll just accept two values. Let the values be x comma y. Okay. I have accepted two values over here. And now with a colon, I will just write the codes. Like I want to print, uh, add two values. S is equals to x plus y. And I will just print S. Over here, we are not uh, required which type of data is coming, what type of values we want. There is no requirement of these all things. We'll directly in, uh, get two values, and those values we're going to add it and print it. That's it. So now, what we'll do, I will just uh, put on this, call this add function, and I need to pass on two values. So for passing on two values, what I need to do, I need to take two inputs. So 
So I'll just copy this part and put it over here. So you can see there's an unintended block in find it out. So this happens when you copy paste or do anything. So uh, over here we have taken two values x and y. Let it be, uh, you may not confuse, you may be confused with the values right over here. So I will just uh, put it to a and b. And I will pass on with the functions like a comma b. So what I have done, I have taken two inputs in a and b and I'm passing the arguments as an argument to the function right over here as a b. Now these, uh, the value of a will be getting stored in x and the second value that is b will be getting stored in y. Now we, over here we are adding two values and printing the functions. Now every time we will execute this code like add a comma b or whatever we want to send. If you want to send two different data like 15 comma 17. So this is also correct and you will get a data. So it's upon you how you want to send the data like I will get two values output over here. So first thing what I write over here 12, 14. So first is 26 and second I am getting 15 plus 17 that is 32. So as many times you can change the data you will, you will be getting different outputs of it. So this is what uh, with the argument and no return. Okay. Similarly when we go for the third thing that is no argument with return. So over here we'll just I will just uh, comment this part and write it over here with argument no return. Okay, uh, I made a mistake. No argument with return. So over here with no, and over here it is with. Now. Now, what is the requirement actually says that we have not to we are not allowed to send any argument to the function means any values are not sent by the calling function to the function main function, but we need to send some data from the main function to the calling function. Are you getting my point? We need to send some data from the main function to the calling function. So how to write this type of thing like def add and I'm not accepting any value. So I will just uh, keep it blank right away here. And now I will just write like x equals to in, in, input and inside that enter first number. Similarly y is equals to in, input and inside it enter second number okay now s is equals to x plus y now we'll print on s now as over here we are al uh, allowed to send some data to the uh, means calling function so what we will do after adding we'll return this so we are returning it will use the return and the value that you want to return s Either you can use uh, parenthesis to send the value or without parenthesis is also okay. It's upon you how you want to send the value. So we are returning s from main function to the calling function. Now where is the calling function? I'm calling the function right over here. So now some value is coming. So when some value is coming, we need to store that value somewhere. So we need to create a variable right over here, x equals to add, and then we will store the values uh, the, that is coming from the main function to the calling function and now we'll just print x right over here and it will give you provided the same data so we'll just execute the code first number may 15 14 the output is 29 let's see this so this is what is no argument with return okay so now I will just uh, comment this part. And the last part is to use the second and the third combining loop. That is with argument with return. Okay. 
So over here, what we need to do now, we'll create an add uh, depth function uh, with add function name. And now I will accept two values that is from uh, that will be sent from the calling function to the main function. Okay, I will be uh, taking two values like 12, uh, not 12, x comma y, two variables. Now I will put on a colon and just go forward. S equals to x plus y. And I will return this value of s. I will just return this value of s to the calling function. So I will just put on a return and then just write s. Okay. Now everything else will be done in the main part. Like I need to take two inputs. So let it be a equals to end input. Enter uh, first number. B equals to end input. Enter second number. Okay. Now we'll just pass on the add function because we want to add it. So add a comma b. Okay. I'm passing the two values. And now what I'm going to do, I will get some return value from here. After passing two values from over here stored in X and Y, they get added and get some return value. So I need to store somewhere. So let it be X where I'm storing the return value X equals to this. And at last, what I'm going to do, I will just print the value print X. I will just print X. So I will just execute this code. And there is a first, the second, and you will get 29. The output is safe. You can see it. So these are the four methods. As for the convenience of the code, we use any of these methods, whatever uh, it gets best suited in. So we use these four methods. So just let me write, uh, write it. Like, uh, just let uh, me know that if you understood this particular concept of four different types of functions. Just let me know in the comment section. Yeah, let me know your doubts, please. Tell you. We use in Python semicolon, we can use in semicolon, like uh, if you write A equals to 16. Now, storing uh, B, we need to write somewhere over here, B equals 12, okay? So this is what in Python it is done, basically. But if you want to write it in same line, so now how, uh, now for example, if you want to write it over here using commas, it will throw you an error. It will throw you an error. But we can write it in the same line using semicolons. You can write it in the same line using semicolons, but uh, as I told you, it uh, just a for, uh, auto formats the thing VS code uh, as per the data. So I'm just, uh, it's just automatically eliminating the semicolon and providing it with this. But you can write semicolon like this, and this is also a correct way to write everything in a single line, okay? So I will just comment this line. I will just comment this line, and I will just do one thing. I will go back to the sector, and now we'll just see now. See, what over here we have done, we have a function named greet. We are accepting a name value over here. And then we are just printing it, okay? This is the concatenation way of printing, like hello, okay, then a space, then I'm adding it. That means I'm printing it as a whole string, okay? This is the concatenation way of printing. This is also permitted in Python, okay? So now over here, I will be calling this function over here, greet and I'm passing the value name and this value is coming over here and printing it. So it's the same thing. Now, using scope variables. Now, what are the scope variables? Now, I will just explain you. Now, what is actually using scope variables are when I'm defining a function like a def 
add and inside this I'm using a variable like x equals 12 and printing it print x uh, let me write it something like this like uh, inside add inside add okay this will give us a better clarity of things and then I will concatenate I will use this concatenation you can use comma anything both are if you are using comma then it will be uh, letting you print directly the value if you are using this concatenation then what happens it will act as a string and print the values so this is only the difference okay you can get the values as per your format now over here I will declare a value of x like 10 now I will print it print in main uh, in main before add okay means before add I have uh, used this value of x and now I will just uh, do the same thing I will print this in the main after add means what happens if this was globally means uh, in C, C++ whatever uh, languages other languages whatever we write outside in the global it is acceptable or accessible to any functions written inside that uh, block okay inside inside it anything what is written it is acceptable but over here what happens it is not accessible okay so we want to check that that if this x equals to 10 and this x both the variable are same this x and this x both the variables are same if we're going to check this but actually these are totally different because this x which is globally it is not accessible over here over here in the add function so i will just uh, prove it so we'll just execute this code okay there is okay uh, so there is something that i need to explain over here x equals to 10 this is an integer type and integer type cannot be concatenated so if you want to use this uh, plus over here then you need to typecast this you need to change this x to string type so if you face any difficulty right over here like uh, this is not type so you just typecast it right over there wherever you face this difficulty and there will be no more difficulty for you okay so we have just typecasted it and we will just print it so you can see what we are getting okay uh, there is another mistake like i need to call up the function without calling the function in the main function it won't get executed so i just just call the function first so now what happens in main function main block before add function the value was 10 now when the add inside add function that x value is 12 now but when it comes back after uh, to the again back to the ma main block then again it value doesn't change it value remains 10 are you getting my point have you got this so whatever variables you use in in the global it's not that if you use the same variable in in a local to a function then it is the same it is actually totally different but if you want to access the variable glo global variable if you want to access the global variable right over here then you need to do something like this global this is a keyword over here global x now what happens you are telling that i want to use this global x variable inside this function so when i'm writing this when i'm writing this that means now what is the variation it makes it makes to the global value okay so i'll just execute this code and now you can see before add function the value was 10 but after add function the global value also became 12 because now whatever changes i'm making i'm making to the global x have you got this one this is very very important when 
if you are confused at this point it will be very difficult for you to understand the global and local concept just uh, let me know in the comment section if you have understood this point Uh, yeah, you can see it. It's like public. You can see uh, actually it's like public uh, means uh, this X is publicly accessible, but this function has its own private data. Okay, it's totally private and it has no access to the public until and unless we provide access to it. It's only for understanding. Don't take as a concept that I'm giving right now. I'm just under making understand the public and private. It's not that. Uh, it's not official terms. See, the private and public that we use in C++ is class and object, and that we will be studying after this. Oops, concept, object-oriented program. Okay, but uh, over here, you can understand this manner, but it is not actually this, particularly this. Okay, it's local and global variables, but you can understand in this manner, like x is equal to n is public, but when we are creating any variable inside a function, it is totally private to that function. We can tell this, okay, it is totally private to that function and only accessible, this public is only accessible when we give access in the private function. Have you got this point? Just let me know in the comment section if you have got this point. Okay, so you have got this. So uh, I hope this part is very, very clear because this will help you a lot because while we do C, C++, Java, then whatever we write globally, it is accessible to any, any of the functions. That is why we make global variables. And whatever we write in local, it's only access to the local. That's it. But over here, the global variables are only accessible when you make access accessible, make them accessible. Okay, this is only the difference. Now, if we move forward, then there is an exercise for you okay just note it down for the exercise the first thing that I, you, the task is write a program to show the even numbers in range from 0 to 50 using function okay and the second question is to sum of a list using function okay how you will do it's upon you you need to create a list with uh, more uh, 5 to 10 numbers and you need to pass on the list or you need to pass on the uh, numbers, whatever you want, whichever uh, four methods you want to use. Or you can do one more thing. The second question, you can do it with all the four methods. Now, this is a challenging task for you. If you make it, then that means you have understood it completely. Okay. The second number question, you need to, con you need to do it the same thing with all the four methods that those are no uh, return no no argument no return with argument no return no argument with return and with argument with return okay so i hope this is clear so for today we're going to end this right over here we won't proceed further in the next session we're going to start with the object oriented programming which plays a vital role in aligning the things okay so